Well, you just blew that. You're the Love Boat, a beloved television series, invited viewers to join its leisurely cruises filled with romance and humor. For nine years, from its maiden voyage in the spring of 1977 until its final journey in 1986, this show captured the hearts of audiences with its unique blend of drama and adventure. Set aboard the luxurious MS Pacific Princess, the series centered on the ship's captain, his crew, and the passengers each portrayed by guest actors who found themselves entwined in tales of love and laughter. As a staple of a BC's Saturday night lineup, the love boat sailed alongside Fantasy Island, offering viewers an escape into a world of oceanic escapades. Came about later on this evening. You rascal! You. Well, man. What? Can I make you a proposition? The Love Boat television series, which premiered in 1977, was inspired by the book The Love Boats, authored by Geraldine Saunders. The book serves as the foundation for the show, drawing from Saunders' real-life experiences while working as a cruise director and hostess. The narrative of the series revolves around the lives of the crew members and the passengers aboard a luxury passenger cruise ship, the Pacific Princess, each episode unfolds a set of intertwined romantic and humorous tales reflecting the interactions and relationships that develop among the guests and crew during their voyage. The series became notable for its guest stars, who often play passengers caught up in love affairs or comedic situations. The show's concept, deeply rooted in Saunders' observations and anecdotes, provided viewers with a glimpse into the unique social microcosm of a cruise ship where people from diverse backgrounds come together for a temporary yet transformative experience. Once I have been faithful to you, dialing my fingers to the bone. The Love Boat, a television series launched in 1977, introduced a novel approach to filming by incorporating real tourists as passengers. These individuals were not merely extras, they were genuine tourists who opted to spend their vacation aboard the Pacific Princess cruise ship while it was being used as the show's setting. This decision to use actual passengers allowed for a more authentic experience, both for the viewers and the tourists themselves. The tourists contributed to the show's atmosphere by bringing a sense of realism that could not be replicated with actors alone. They paid a premium, thousands of dollars, for the opportunity to be part of the show's filming process. This unique method not only provided a dynamic and ever-changing backdrop for the series, but also allowed these tourists to become part of television history. The presence of real passengers on the ship added an element of spontaneity and authenticity to the show, making The Love Boat a distinctive project in the history of television production. When nobody follows, share this direction. Over! In the television series The Love Boat, which debuted in 1977, three actors demonstrated remarkable commitment to their roles throughout the show's entire run. Gavin McLeod portrayed Captain Merrill Steubing, the authoritative yet kind-hearted leader of the cruise ship. Bernie Copel took on the role of Dr. Adam Bricker, whose medical expertise was matched by his playboy demeanor. Ted Lang brought to life the character of Isaac Washington, the ship's bartender, known for his friendly and wise nature. These actors became the pillars of the series, appearing consistently across all 250 episodes. Their performances contributed significantly to the show's success and helped establish the series as a staple of American television during its time on air. The characters they played captain, doctor, and bartender became synonymous with the actors themselves, showcasing their dedication to the craft and the series. The television series The Love Boat, which began in 1977, became a symbol of popular culture, known for its romantic and comedic tales set aboard a luxury passenger cruise ship. As the years passed, the vessel that served as the setting for the series, The Pacific Princess, aged alongside the show's legacy. By the year 2010, The Pacific Princess had reached a point where modernization and repair were no longer viable options due to the excessive costs involved. Recognizing the impracticality of refurbishing the aging ship, the owners decided to sell it. The Pacific Princess was purchased by a Turkish company for approximately $3 million. The ship, once a star of the small screen, and a vessel that carried countless passengers on voyages of adventure and romance was destined to be dismantled and sold as scrap, marking the end of an era for the beloved love boat. Bradbury, relative of the groom? The father. 
No. In the television series The Love Boat, which debuted in 1977, the compensation for guest stars varied significantly per episode. The payments ranged from a minimum of $1,000 to a maximum of $25,000. This scale of remuneration reflected the varying degrees of celebrity among the guest stars. Lana Turner, a well-known actress of her time, was among the highest paid guest stars on the show. She was compensated with $25,000 for her role in the Milestone 200th episode. This episode was a significant event, and her compensation was indicative of the value placed on appearances by prominent figures in the entertainment industry at the time. The show's approach to guest star compensation highlighted the economic realities of television production and the premium placed on star power to attract viewership. Cutting off my circulation. <laughs> You are crazy. Yes. In the 1977 television series The Love Boat, the episode featuring Tundra the Wonder Dog was a special highlight. Tundra, known for the role in the movie Against All Odds, graced the show with a guest appearance. This episode stood out as it brought the charm of a celebrity pet to the beloved series. Tundra's performance was not just a display of trained behaviors, but also showcased the unique bond between humans and animals on screen. The presence of an animal star like Tundra added a different dimension to the episode, providing viewers with a delightful break from the human-centric stories typically explored in the series. Problem to be able to see it clearly. Well, I should have been able to see it. I'm a doctor, aren't I? Or I was a doctor. After his tenure on the love boat as the lovable character Gopher, Fred Grandy left the world of acting and transitioned into politics. His new career path led him to serve as a United States congressman representing the state of Iowa. His political career spanned from 1987 until 1995, during which time he was involved in the legislative process and served the interests of his constituents. This career move was a significant shift from his previous role as an actor, showcasing his ability to adapt and succeed in a completely different professional environment. I have feelings. And I care about you, Mary. The television series The Love Boat, which premiered in 1977, became known for its distinctive use of a laugh track. During this period, the trend of incorporating canned laughter in television shows was on the decline. Despite this shift in production norms, The Love Boat continued to employ a laugh track throughout its run. This practice persisted until the show's conclusion in 1987, making it one of the last television series of its genre to utilize a laugh track. The show's adherence to this traditional method of audience engagement was a notable aspect of its production, setting it apart from contemporary series that had begun to move away from such practices. Tell. No, there's nothing wrong, Sarah. You just, well, you finally convinced me that I should take it easy. In the 1977 television series, The Love Boat, a notable plot inconsistency involves Isaac, the bartender, Initially, Isaac is seen greeting passengers, a task not typically within the bartender's role. This discrepancy is later addressed by revealing that Isaac was awarded an honorary rank in recognition of his heroic actions. This backstory provides a plausible explanation for his involvement in welcoming guests aboard, aligning with his established character as a beloved and respected member of the crew. The series often used such developments to add depth to its characters, allowing them to grow and become more integral to the narrative. I don't worry. Oh, Julie, how could I ever thank you? Forget it. Lauren Tews gained fame on the love boat as Julie McCoy, the crew's director whose charm and friendliness became a staple of the show. However, behind the scenes, Tews was struggling with drug addiction, an issue that became widely known and eventually led to her dismissal from the series. Her character's exit was not directly addressed in the storyline, leaving viewers with a sudden absence of one of the show's beloved characters. Two's departure occurred before the conclusion of the seventh season, marking a significant change in the show's dynamic and casting. I'm all she's got in the world. She needs me. In the 1977 television series The Love Boat, the role of Dr. Adam Bricker was a significant casting decision. Initially, the producers wanted Dick Van Patten for the part. However, his commitment to the television show 8 is enough made him unavailable. Consequently, Bernie Copel, who was a close friend of Van Patten, was offered the role and he accepted it. 
Copel's portrayal of the ship's doctor became one of the memorable aspects of the show, contributing to its success and popularity during its run. The series, set on a cruise ship, was known for its comedic approach to the romantic and humorous adventures of the passengers and crew. Big it, Paul. I'm sorry. I have a genius for saying the wrong thing. Believe the Love Boat, a popular television series from 1977, became well known for its unique approach to guest appearances. The show stood out by featuring characters from other successful ABC network series, creating crossover episodes that were a delight for viewers. Notably, it included characters from Happy Days, Welcome Back Cotter, and Battlestar Galactica. This innovative strategy allowed fans to see their favorite characters in a new setting aboard the Pacific Princess cruise ship, where the main cast of The Love Boat interacted with these guest stars. This crossover technique was a clever way to boost viewership and create a shared universe within the ABC network, making The Love Boat a memorable series that embraced the concept of an interconnected television landscape. Jackets on the left, okay? Oh, I'll never remember it. <laughs> it's all right. I'll be here to help you. In the final season of The Love Boat, a new addition to the cast made a significant splash. This group, known as the Love Boat Mermaids, was a dance ensemble that brought a fresh dynamic to the show's entertainment lineup. Among the talented performers was Terry Hatcher, who would later become widely recognized for her role in the television series Desperate Housewives. The inclusion of the Love Boat Mermaids added a new layer of charm and appeal to the beloved series, showcasing elaborate dance numbers and adding to the overall allure of the cruise experience depicted in the show. The presence of these performers marked a notable shift in the series' approach to onboard activities, reflecting the evolving trends in television entertainment during that era. The dryer, and she said she was standing alone, and all of a sudden, this math man popped out. In 2006, Terry Hatcher shared a personal and painful part of her past, revealing that at the age of five, she was sexually abused by an uncle. This revelation came to light when she bravely assisted law enforcement in 22, which contributed to the indictment of the perpetrator. Her actions were pivotal in bringing justice as the man faced charges for abusing other girls. This disclosure from Hatcher, known for her role on the television series The Love Boat, was a significant moment that highlighted the importance of speaking out against abuse and supporting victims in their quest for justice. Meryl Steubing! Well, it's Captain Meryl Steubing. 